So it occurred to me while I was just getting ready to start the rest of the scene build and do a little off movie work here to save some time that I really should show you how to go ahead and quickly replicate and repurpose work that you've already done to save yourself a lot of time later on. We've created our truck animation. What I want to do is create a bunch of different vehicles and we're not going to create a bunch on screen here or movie, but I did want to show you how I'll be doing that so it makes more sense later on. We've got our truck that zooms past that open area and again we've got the width of that motion there wide enough that when we do a camera back out or we zoom back out from, away from our frog to match the storyboard we've got enough room on either side to back out and show a broader perspective. Well, let's go ahead and redraw this real quickly. One of the first things we'll need to do is, let me go ahead and open up our actions palette again. To be safe is to go ahead and take this animation or this action and destroy it. The reason we'll want to do that is we'll be creating new shapes and things here real quickly or repurposing these and we don't want any residual action information to, to mess up the work that you do. Just the best method for working on something like this. I'll pull that out of the way just a little bit. Let's go ahead and zoom in real quickly. This is already on the layer way over to the right and that's just fine for us. But let's go ahead and turn this into something like a car and I suppose another best method we should probably save this as something like car yellow into our frog folder. Now we can save with confidence. So here we go. We'll go ahead and hit keyboard shortcut Q. We'll change this to a yellow. And let me change our display quality again so we can see the full effect there. And then we'll zoom in on this a little bit. Switching back to T for translate, I'll get the roof of our car set up. We'll have the hood a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and we can choose to delete an edge right here. I'm going to select a point and delete that because we don't need that right there and it straightens that line out. A will let me add a point back to T so I can create our trunk. We'll want to go ahead and make this sharp so I'll press the keyboard shortcut P for peak which is the tool over here in our draw palette. Right there I should point to the correct one. For the window, we'll go ahead and come back to T and we'll move the window to the center of the door post here or the about mid body on the car. And then I'm simply going to go ahead and keyboard shortcut G. The entire shape is selected. I'm going to copy and paste it. T will let me move this down here a little bit. G to deselect. T comes back, keyboard shortcut. And we're simply going to go ahead and quickly modify that art so we don't need to draw the new art for that. We can add some bumpers if we want to. We can add headlights. Again, this is going by so quickly, I don't know that I want to add a whole bunch of detail. I will go ahead and add a bumper in the front and a bumper in the back. And then just for a little sophistication, something that I also did off camera for the truck is to go ahead and change a little bit of the effects that are going on just to give it a nice added boost of sophistication. We will go to the gradient effect. For the color at the top, I'm going to leave that white, but I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. It will become transparent about halfway. And this is just to create an object that's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. For the darker color, we'll pick a nice orange hue. Again, I'll go ahead and reduce that to about 50% opacity and select OK. We can see a little bit of this effect right here. And if I do a render right here, let me go ahead and clear that out of the way. We won't see anything because the car is so far off the center of the layer, which was intentional for our animation, that we can't see it until it gets in the middle of the layer. So our car is here. We just quickly go ahead and create a new action. We make sure our layer is selected. And we'll simply title this car right to left. We'll move to frame one. With keyboard shortcut G selected, we'll go ahead and select everything. Go ahead and press the keyboard shortcut T and I'll just click on the canvas area here and we get our keyframes that pop in there real quickly. I'm going to back out now quite a ways. And I'm going to pick a new 
prime number a length of our animation. And again, the reason to do that, and I'll choose something like, say, 29. I'll move our time slider down to that. The reason is that when you pick a prime number, a number that is only divisible by itself and the number 1, is that it doesn't create obvious visual patterns when you start using repeating motion. So if you're doing something like butterfly wings or bird wings or passing cars, using prime numbers for the animation loop cycles prevents any kind of pattern from showing up. And actually that's not quite true. If you sit through about 3000 hours of the pattern you will, or the, the animation, you'll see a pattern pop in there once or twice. But for the most part, not so much. Let's go ahead now that we're at frame 29. I'll select the car, shift, or hold the shift key down and constrain that motion as I drag it across to a perfect horizontal motion. We'll select our keyframe, we'll choose cycle, we'll leave it at absolute and select OK. And now we've got a car that goes speeding by and that will keep repeating. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and take a look with some of the components already built of how to go ahead and assemble this scene for this close-up of our frog and then the slow pull-out that reveals all the traffic.